Excellent. All right, so I'm Dave. Uh, hopefully everybody got it, some good lunch. So sit back, relax. This is going to be a, a pretty light talk. I want, just want to tell you about how I built a network multiplayer game in Racket and what features of Racket made it possible for me to do that. I come from a pretty different background than a lot of people. I'm not from academia at all. I'm just like a regular Joe Schmo programmer. Um, all right, so what is this game? It's a LAN party game. The idea is you get a bunch of your friends together, uh, each individual player has to do something very simple, but the whole idea is coordinated action. You all have to do things together in order to make pro progress in the game. So here's a screenshot, and you can see a lot of stuff going on. So there's a bunch of different ships, and they're all shooting at each other. Typical space stuff. So let me, uh, let me just show you a, a quick demo here. So let me run the server here, and a client. All right, so you put in your name, the IP address of the server. All right, so here I am, I'm in the game. I'm seeing a overview of what's going on. You can see that, so I'm gonna click this button to get on the base, and now I can click this thing to become a weapons operator, and I'll click over here and shoot some shots. Um, then I'll leave this, and I'll go into the hangar, uh, jump on board one of, the, one of the ships, become a pilot, you can see this message, so some enemy ships have appeared, they're gonna come attack us, so I'll launch off, and as I'm clicking, that's telling my little fighter where to go, and I'll fly over towards the enemy base here, and it starts shooting at me, um, et cetera, et cetera, and then you can see there's some effects when you get hit, the screen shakes, um, and uh, I just died, and so now I have my little spacesuit, so you can see what happened after you die, and after that you leave, and now, now you can choose your, you can go into the game again. So does that make sense to everybody? Any questions about that so far? Yes? How do I get in game? I will tell you right at the end. All right, so let me uh, leave that. All right, so how does this game work? It's server is authoritative, broadcast changes to all the clients. Um, the clients do predict locally the motion of things to make things smooth because this, the messages from the server don't always come when you want them. And then I'm doing no input prediction. So when you click with the mouse, you send a message to the server, server decides what happens and returns to you. I'm assuming you're on a LAN, so that works. Uh, that's a future thing to make it work on, like across the internet. Does that make sense? All right. So the racket features that really made this game possible were the high-level GUI toolkit. Thank you very much for the new racket-based GUI layer, which made it very easy to get things on the screen and is very, very performant. I'm getting uh, 25 to 30 frames per second really easily with quite a few bitmaps on the screen. Uh, the fact that it's multi-platform, so I wrote the whole thing on a Linux laptop, and then my friends showed up with Windows and Mac, and it ran flawlessly. So I had no problems there. The documentation, everything that I learned about making this all work was just reading through the GUI documentation. And then a couple of things, I cannot stress enough how good the mailing list is. Um, fantastic. And then for me, the killer feature of Racket is an easy ramp from a prototype to the game. So here we go, six steps. Getting something on the screen. So this box represents a process, and this was just getting triangles and squares on the screen moving around. And then, get two threads running. So I'm starting to separate the code into the client part and the server part. They sh still share state, so that's the next step is to make this the communication explicit. So now we've got the server's idea of what's going on, the client's idea of what's going on, and they're all communicating over a pipe. And then debugging multiple clients. So this is in the same process space using the fantastic event spaces, which was as simple as run my client code once, make a new event space, run the client code again, and everything just works. Any questions on that? Make sense? All right. All right, so now going to multi-process space, replace the pipes 
under the hood with TCP sockets, which is really easy because they're all using the port abstraction. And then you just run everything in the separate process. And when I told a friend about this, he said, wow, that's much easier than if I was going to try to write a multi-process game where I had to start and get all this infrastructure in place before you even get something working. So that was definitely the, the killer feature for me. And in fact, going backwards on the ramp is really important too. So when I'm debugging something where I'm not sure that the client and the server are thinking the same thing, I run them back in the same process space and then I have a back door where the client can render both what it thinks is going on and then overlay with the server's idea of what's going on. Cool? Awesome. All right, so some easy wins. All my game state is just prefab structs, and then I send them just read and write over the sockets. That's all I'm doing. It works great. And then adding exceptions as needed to give myself just enough network robustness. Um, I had no problems adding a little bit of that stuff. So let's look at some code. Here's my drawing code for drawing a ship on the screen. So I get a drawing context. Does so everybody this look familiar to people? Uh, okay. Um, keep transform is a little macro that just makes sure that whatever we do to the transformation matrix in the drawing context in this, in this block gets reverted. Go find where the ship is on the, in the screen coordinates and then translate, rotate, scale and draw the bitmap. So this is all I'm doing and I'm getting great performance out of it so far. So any questions about that? All right, we're just blazing through this stuff. All right, so in my client loop, I'm actually hijacking the GUI thread. So down here, I queue the callback to make sure I'm running on the GUI thread. And then when I run through, I figure out how much time has elapsed in terms of communicating with the server, drawing the frame to the screen, and I figure out how much time I want to sleep before I want to render the next frame, and then just sleep yield for that amount of time to let the GUI layer process inputs and deal with other OS level stuff. So does, does this make sense to people? This is not... Uh, I, if I understand your, correction, your question correctly, I'm just trying to get to a maximum of 30 frames per second. Does that, does that answer your question? No, so if you're getting, if the, you know, you're running on a really old laptop and you're only getting 20 frames per second, it'll just burn as fast as it can. Um, it's always trying to push, push higher than that. Anybody else? The, they run at the same physics frame step. Uh, since the server doesn't have any visualization, it doesn't have a frame rate in that sense. But yeah, the kind of the physics simulation is all is in lockstep in the sense that it's all um, each tick is the same the same width. Um, and that, that turns out to be very important to just make sure that the client prediction code correctly predicts what's going to happen. Because there are a lot of little things that don't integrate well over larger time spans. Good? Yes? How often does the server update the client state compared to the client Right now I'm doing them in the exact same uh, time step. So the server sends 30 hertz uh, update messages. You, most of the update messages are really tiny. It just says uh, nothing happened. And uh, is that a great idea? I don't know, but it's working so far. No, just the updates to the state. Yes, I. Yeah, probably that would work. I haven't tried that. Um, I probably should. Um, yeah. 
did you have to turn on TCP no delay? Yes, I did <laughs> okay. because um, my server is sending out very tiny messages and getting no response from the client. And so that's the classic case where you run into the problem of TCP delaying the messages for like 50 or 100 milliseconds or something. Yeah. Um, and so I ran into that and I finally figured out what was going on. And I said, oh my goodness, how am I going to fix this? I need to set a socket option that is not available. So I was like, well, I could always use the FFI. And then I said, Somebody else has probably run into the situation before. Google search, and Ryan had a blog post that said, here's the exact code that you need to turn that socket option on. So thank you for that. Saved me many hours of digging into the FFI. Anybody else? Yes? So out of curiosity, why 30 frames a second uh, as opposed to, say, 60 frames a second? Uh, just some, some very early uh, timing prototypes that I did. Um, I thought it was going to be difficult to get above about 30 frames per second uh, using the relatively um, you know, simple code. I'm not doing anything special. And I thought, eh, 30 frames per second is enough to get a playable game. So I didn't push too hard on it, at least not yet. Call of Duty runs at 30, so you're in safe company. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I, I actually was wondering something about this code. Did you have any weird callback bugs where uh, the sleep yield actually entered client loop again? I have not run into any of those yet. Good. Good. <laughs> uh, that, that was actually, so I tried at the beginning, I was, I was uh, setting a timer into the GUI loop to call client loop again and again. And it always felt a little bit weird to me I've settled on this solution for now, and it seems to be working well for me, but I don't know if there's some... Jay would know better than me, but this is, I think, the thing you do if you want good performance. All right. But, but also, it can be tricky. If, you, if, if sleep yield somehow accidentally calls back into client loop. Oh, okay. I think I'm okay because this is the only kind of uh, entry point into the loop. All right, so, so what am I going to do from here? Um, runtime path for graphic files. Right now I'm just using relative paths, so the game is sensitive to what directory you run it in. Just more stuff in the game. Uh, right now there's a single scenario in the server, so I want to make it so that when you launch the server, you get a nice you know, pick your scenario that you want to play. And then some future ideas that... Features of Racket make it possible for me to even consider doing. So having a language for scenarios, because a lot of these scenarios end up being pretty complicated where you have multiple different things and you never know how long it's going to be until a certain ship dies or a certain condition happens, but you want to have the win-loss checks be combinations of those. If you want to have some kind of media files that are specific to a scenario, so you can imagine having a special sound that plays and you want to package that up with the scenario and distribute it to the clients so that not every client has to download a special scenario pack before playing the game. And then maybe, maybe I could use the runtime evaluation features of Racket to actually extend the physics engine of the game on a scenario by scenario basis. Maybe that's possible. And then having like a game master mode with a REPL where you, they can type in anything and then obviously I need to sandbox the clients. Um, so that's all I got. So where do you get the game? Uh, it's on GitHub right now. Play it. You can probably get like 15 minutes of fun out of it. And tell me what you think. And thank you for Slideshow. Fantastic. Yes. How many people can you get playing in the game at once? Or have you tried to find, find out the answer to that question? I have not tried to find out. I have successfully played with five different people. At once. That's correct, at once. 
So could we why why not put in the laptop here? Let's download the game. At the end of the day, we play your game. You bet. I will. Yeah, right. I will make that happen. In the room, we should be able to get it with forty, right? <laughs> yep. <laughs> we'll try to crash the server. All right. Thanks, Dick.